Hey everybody, Pastor Sam with your verse of the day from Gospel Gunslingers. They let me back in the cafe and I'm like, just, it's almost too good to be true. I'm going to out here. I have an air conditioned comfort. Man, I've been sitting on the street like a dog. I've done a lot of my preaching in office and like that. And at home, right? So today we're in Luke the 19th. This is a really interesting passage. Once again, it's something that's very often misread, so let's just throw it out there. Let's see what it says. And uh, we're going to start in 11. Our main verses are 11 and 27, so if you're on Twitter, you'll have to catch that second video to get the final verse, which is the real iron-slinging, gun-slinging verse. All right, so Jesus is telling a parable. This is the parable of the talents, and I want you to really focus on why the Lord even tells this parable. Here we go. And as they heard these things, he added, that is Jesus, and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Okay, so we've discussed before how the disciples thought, now's the time the Messiah's here. He's going to crush Rome. He's going to crush everything. And our little tiny, smaller than New Jersey country is going to rule again. Well, okay, you know, uh, Jesus is like, hey, there's some scriptures written. I'm going to open the door to the Gentiles, too. You know, there's islands of the sea that are thousands of miles off in the middle of the Pacific. I'm going to open up salvation to them. There is going to be this very lengthy 20th century time of uh, peace. A 20th century epoch where he's extending grace to the world. And then comes in and wrecks the place and destroys it. It comes in the form of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So they thought the kingdom was going to immediately appear. And then he says, occupy till I come. That's verse 13. Very important. And this is the parable of the talents. The parable of the talents continues from this point. So the parable of the talents is a beautiful thing in itself. You're going to have to look at that yourself because we don't have time in our four minute and 40 second lesson to cover the parable of the talents but you know God has a goal for everybody to glorify him with what they've got it's very important but let's just rock on down to 27 now let's go a little bit before that for 14 but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying we will not have this man reign over us and it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. So here the, the talent holders come forth, and boy, they better have performed. But there's something else. What about the disposition of the, the citizens that sent messengers after the king who was going to receive his kingdom. See, he wasn't a king at the time. He was going to receive his kingdom. They sent messengers and said, we don't want this guy. We don't like him. We don't like him. Of course, Israel did this. The world did this. People blame Israel for something that the whole world is responsible for. But he went to his own and his own received him not. And it's very important that you see what happens to God-haters. They're really typified not by Israel in the Bible, but by Edom. But by Edom, when you see Edom in the Bible, those are the God haters, those are the people that hate the Lord Jesus and will not have him to reign over them. And I want you to see what the Lord says. This is in red letters, okay? This is in the New Testament. This is the words of the Lord Jesus. Verse 27, the king says, But those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Is that beautiful? They'll be beaten before the face of the judge. This is something that's in the law of Moses. It's in Judges. And then here as we get into the teachings of Jesus, here it is again that the king commands the, ser the, the unfaithful service to be brought before him and slain before his face. I'm Pastor Sam. It's your verse of the day for gospel gunslingers.